Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at some more advanced ways to use hair and how we can have significantly more control over where hair goes, how long it is. And we're not going to go fully into depth with this, but I want to show you the basics of how this process and workflow works. Um, there are people who are much better at doing hair in um, Cinema 4D than I am uh, out there in the world, <laughs> many, many people. Um, and it is a really, um, it's just, it's a complicated and uh, time consuming process. Um, it's sort of like giving somebody a haircut, right? It takes a while when they sit in the chair for you to be able to go through and actually do this and do it effectively. And it takes a lot of practice. Um, but I'm hoping to show you some of the things that will get you started on that path. All right, so step one, um, create a new scene. Now, we could, okay, I think I'm in standard, there we go, good. Now, we could do this with, um, with the horse head that we made in a previous tutorial, but because it's just easier to grab a human head for this, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go to our asset browser. You can get there whichever way you want. My window asset browser works, shift F8. The little asset browser button over here works too, and whatever you wanna do. And I'm just gonna type in bust, right? Because I want a human bust. You could do a male or female bust. It doesn't really matter. Um, and, or generic human, whatever, whatever you wanna do. Um, we just need to grab one of them and drop it down here. And I don't think we want this bust, that there's too much going on there already. So I've got my basic bust. I'm gonna go ahead and close my asset browser. I'm gonna hit H so I can frame this. And I wanna to go to display garage shading and lines. And the reason for that is we're gonna be doing a lot of polygon selections and things. Okay, so to recap from the previous one, right? I could just have this selected, go to my simulate menu, go down to hair objects and say, add hair. Now, the only issue with this is, right, I have hair everywhere um, in a way that is like nightmarish already, right? Imagine if I'm trying to work with this and clean this up and everything, um, that is not going to work. And so I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Now, one of the great things about hair is that we can have multiple hair objects attached to the same um, base object, and we can also define where those hairs are going to be connected, right? So imagine that this person has, I don't know, maybe they have short hair, maybe they have, you know, maybe they've shaved the sides, but they have long hair on top and in the back, kind of mullety. Um, right, we wouldn't, it'd be, it can't, you can do it with a single hair tag, um, however, or hair object, however, it's going to be tricky and there's, um, and when you go to style it and everything, there's a lot of ways where it can be frustrating to do. And so, you know, part of your job when you're starting to do hair on a human figure or it, say this is on like a horse or a cow or something like that is looking at the hair over the whole body, right? Are there areas where it's longer, right? For a horse or um, a cow, there might be some sort of, well, not for a cow. For a horse, there's a mane, right? The tail is significantly longer and a totally different hair consistency. The mane and tail are different hair consistencies than the body. Right, even on the face of the horse or whatever, there might be areas where there's like a little bit of like longer hairs and shorter hairs. And so part of this process is just figuring out where those hairs are, how much the difference is, and if it's going to make sense to um, to use one or multiple hair tags in order to make this happen. Right, if everything's pretty much uniform, that's fine. But if you have areas where the hair is, you know, substantially different in texture, consistency, length, um, you're going to want to probably split those up, right? Like if this figure had a beard and had, right, head hair, we'd want to be able to do both of those, um, but have them be distinct from one another. So what we can do is we can create selection areas and we can do... Um, a range of different things. There's a couple setup steps we need to do, but the first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to give this guy a ponytail with no other hair on his head. 
um, to start with as a base for what we're working on and so we can see some of these settings. So the way we do that is we're going to go to polygon mode. We're going to use our brush selection tool. And if I want the poly, I basically want his ponytail to be here. So I'm going to select these four polygons. Once I've got those four polygons selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I am going to go to um, up to simulate, and I'm going to go down to hair objects and add hair. Now, the other way that you can do that, right, is if I hit shift C on the keyboard um, and then type in hair, right, add hair is the very first option that I've got available to me. So that's another way you can get there very quickly instead of menu diving. Okay, so if I zoom out a little bit, you're gonna see that these hairs are insanely long, right? They're 100 centimeters long. This is like, that's a meter. That's, you know, four feet of hair, pretty much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shorten his ponytail a bit. We're gonna make it like 25 centimeters long. So if you're in the States like me, that's more or less a foot. Um, and to do that, we're gonna select our hair object. We're gonna go to the guides tab and we're gonna say length, we want this to be 25, right? So that looks a lot less intimidating. Now, the other thing that we need to do is we need to make sure, like, with the steps that we're going to be taking, um, guides work all right, um, and that's how we're going to style the hair and everything else, um, and we're going to be using some tools. However, they are also confusing, and you don't really get a full sense of where the hair is and the volume and the density and all of that unless we're sitting there rendering it and rendering takes forever. So there's a way to start to change that. And so what we can do is we can go make sure our hair objects selected, go to our viewport tab over here. And instead of guidelines, um, we can say hairlines. And when we do that, we'll get our guides, but we're also going to get like a really crappy preview of our hairs that are interpolated between those lines. And so just um, a note, like if you look here at the back, you can see that there's like this scooping that happens between these points, right? And there's hairs that kind of spread and evenly distribute themselves across here. That's interpolation if you're, if you're not familiar. Basically what it's saying is I have these two points and I want all, I want, you know, there's some algorithm that determines where each of these hairs gets placed in the dis in between those two points. Okay, so if I um, <laughs> if I rotate my view, if I hit play on my playhead, right? Remember this physics impacts this, right? So suddenly I've got this really, you know, kind of nice ponytail. Um, you can see already that there's some that my guides only have a few um, things, and I don't know how this if you have a lower quality computer, you may not be able to do this if your settings aren't really quite 100% up to spec. Um, you might have issues rendering all of these hairs. I'm not sure how that works. I know it works actually flawlessly on this computer. Um, so then, uh, you know, I could, you can kind of see there's like a really hard corner here. So I might already want to go back to my guides tab and say, I should probably have more segments here. If I did 16 instead, You'll notice when I do that, it pops back out. So I have to hop back to frame zero and then play forward again, right? And you can see that now it's done that, but it's also, right, because it doesn't have quite so much tension here, it's folding and it's it's going a lot closer to the skin. Now, there are ways that we can adjust that. Um, we're not going to focus on that right now. So let's set this to actually, let's just set this to 12. That should be a nice happy medium where we'll get some, right, some volume here, um, but we still have the um, tags flowing there. Okay, right, so we can set, we can have hair, right, set up like that. Now, what if we also want hair, right, that, you know, we need hair that kind of goes back and maybe looks like it goes into that ponytail, but doesn't actually have to be fed into the ponytail and then spread out again. Right, we can do a couple things here. We can either, um, it really depends on how we want the hair to look and fall. 
Um, if we say we wanted a part right down the center, and for some reason <laughs> this person has a ponytail in the back, but then the hair drapes off either side here, there's a couple ways that we could um, go about doing that. Okay, so now we need to define the next place where we want hair to go. So we're going to define a strip of polygons here. And we don't want all of those polygons. We just want, I'm going to hold down control, get rid of those. We just want that strip. Now, before we go too far, one of the things we're going to want to do, and I think I already did this in my demo, is we're going to want to select this polygon selection here. What's happened is as soon as we selected these polygons on the back of the head and added a hair tag, it created this polygon selection tag to kind of keep that selection area. And so um, what we're going to need to do is the name would just be polygon selection. But in our case, we want to make sure this is named ponytail. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to go to our hair um, object and we're going to name this ponytail as well, right? Because we're going to have multiples of these and we're going to want to make sure that we can um, that we can keep them separate and know what they're going to be. Now, what would be great is if I could just copy this, keep all of these settings and have it apply. But when you do that, what it actually does is it keeps the old guides back here. And it actually was just going to stretch the hair that's rooted in this part of the scalp and pull it back this way. Now, that could be really useful, right? If you were trying to do something where the hair was pulled back into this ponytail, which is not what we're doing in this case, that could be a really effective way to make sure the hair gets laid exactly how you want it. Um, but in our case, that's not what we want to do. We want to have this. Um, we want to have this be independent of the ponytail. So we're going to go hold, ahead and hold down Shift C. And when we do that, we're going to scroll down until we find Add Hair, which I have hair typed in here. If you don't see any of that, just type in hair, and you will find it. And I'm going to click, uh, double click on that. So now you can see, right, I've got this other thing. I need to make a couple changes. I'm going to set my segments to 12. My length will set to 25 again, just to keep it even for now. And then um, we're going to go ahead and in the viewport, we want to show our hairlines. There we go. All right. And now he really does have like a mohawk <laughs> currently. That's actually 25 is probably a little long. We might want to make this a little bit shorter. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and drop our guide length to 15. Okay. And then let's just see what happens if we play this. It should tip this way, but some of it may fall the other direction. Right? Okay. So it did. And now you'll notice it, it fell. It's in front of his eyes. It's so emo. But it's also going through his head. Right? Now this is a problem. Um in that we don't want the hair to intersect the head. So how are we going to resolve this? So within the hair engine, there are um, there's a, a tag you can apply to objects called a hair collider. So if I right click on the head and I go down to hair objects, I can make this a hair collider. And if I pop this back out now and go ahead and hit play again, you'll see that it does a better job, right? It is still not 100% um, keeping the hairs from intersecting with his face. And so there's a couple settings we need to change to make that work. So if I go to my hair tag, which this we can, we're going to rename these things in a little bit. Um, if I go to the dynamics tab, this is where collisions and all of these things happen. Um, we're not going to worry about a lot of these settings currently. Um, but what we do want to do is we want to increase our surface radius. I'm going to set this to 10 right now, and we'll just see what happens there. That's a pretty big jump. <laughs> right? So you can see that's too big, and it's hilarious, but it's also just way too big. So let's go ahead and jump back to frame zero. Let's set this to 2 instead and see if that's too big as well. Okay, that's actually working much better right now there are I'm going to pause this somewhere 
there are still hairs that are going to be intersecting his face and his head, but it's something where it's like under the scalp, right? We're not going to be able to necessarily see those intersections. Even if we can see through to his skin, um, we're not going to be able to see, you know, quite as much, um, right? We're just not going to be able to, we're not going to be, able, we're not going to be too concerned about that. Now, if there were hairs like right, like here, his hair is actually going through the surface of his head. This is something where we're going to be styling the hair and we can fix that. But we want to at least get things set up so that we have some, we could potentially start in a reasonably successful spot um, before we get going too far. Okay, so right, so we've got this other strip of hair. Um, it's not really laying the way we want it to because, right, physics, this is just going to drop straight down and maybe fall this direction a bit and bounce around, and that's not really what we want to have happen. Um, but we're starting to get into the right direction. Now, the other thing is all this hair looks, you know, doesn't look great either, but that's what the hair material is going to do for us once we start to, to get things a little bit further along. Okay, so... Um, Let's say on, let's go ahead and rename these things so we don't forget this. We're going to call this the half hawk, right? Half hawk. And then we also want to make sure that we rename the one, right? We have two of these tags here. One's ponytail, one's polygon selection. We're going to select polygon selection. We're going to name that half hawk as well, right? This naming convention is just going to make our life easier as we go on with this tutorial. I'm going to save this now um, because I haven't yet. So hair toot, not hari toot, hair toot, part two. Okay, so we've got this saved. Um, hair can make things run really, really slow, just as a heads up. It's pretty expensive sometimes. Okay, so let's go ahead and give him some stubble on this side of his head. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually just going to select down. Um, he's not going to have any sideburns, but I'm actually going to do a pretty big selection area for this one. So we're, we've got our things here and then he'll just have a shaved head here, something. And you'll see I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, oops, not do those. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to keep selecting this. Right, and I don't want to get his ear in there. Obviously, this is a low poly head. We're not super concerned about all the things, but let's go ahead and do this. We're not going to, in this case, he's not going to have any hair on the other side of his head. Um, and that's just because of the way that we don't really need to have that set. So we're just going to go down and maybe just go underneath half that. Okay. It's a pretty boring looking <laughs> hairstyle, but that's all right. Okay, so I've got that big selection there. Let's go ahead and shift C to make one more hair area. And then we've got that set. Um, let's make sure that that, oh no, that did not do the right thing. Why did that not select? Oh, okay. So, right, so when I did that, it added it to this other selection area, and that's because I have that selection area selected right now. So if I select this, you'll see that now there's um, right nothing selected. Um, if I select here, here we go. Okay. So now that I don't have one of my tags selected here, let's try and add hair one more time. See what happens. Hey, look at that. And we've got our third area. So let's go ahead and start by making this really short. So I'm going to go back to my guides tab and I'm going to set the length to five, right? That's still pretty long. Let's go ahead and go down to um, two and a half, 2.5 centimeters. Let's just go ahead and go to two. We're going to leave it at that for the time being. Okay, so we've got that set. And again, right, let's go to our viewport, change our guidelines to hairlines. Right. And so you can see now we've got these three different lengths of hair. Fantastic. Obviously, right now it looks pretty chunky in here. Um, and we're not going to worry too much about that at this point in our process. Okay, so 
we've done that. Let's rename these things. Um, I'm just going to call this short hair because or shaved head or whatever. We'll just call it short. And I'm going to select this, whichever one of these it is. Let's see here. That's ponytail. That's half hawk. All right. This one's going to be short hair too. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay, so we've got the basic setup done. We're at a place where it's good to um, save our work. And now the next step is we're going to start styling this. 